It is often rare for medical illustrations to go viral. But a few days back, uh, medical drawings were shared across social media. These illustrations went viral because they feature Black people, something that is fairly uncommon in medical imagery. Chidiye Bere Ibe, a 25-year-old and a first-year medical student aspiring to be a neurosurgeon, realized a lack of diversity in the skin tones used in textbooks and medical workups. With a passion for art and medicine, Ibe decided to combine both of his talents to bridge the gap by creating illustrations on his own and sharing them on his Instagram. Chideberry, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank you. Ibe, could you just tell us about your artistic practice uh, background? All right, um, so I, I started drawing officially with pen and pencil 2014. But the very first day I started drawing medical illustrations was last year, July, during the lockdown, that's July 2020. So I've been, um, and I'm a self-taught artist and a self-taught medical illustrator. That's amazing. What initially drew you to painting? I mean, was there a moment where you discover a connection to this medium? Yeah, uh, so, uh, so as, as a 2000, I mean, as I earlier said, I was an artist first. Okay, so um, when I started learning how to draw, was um, after my, my high school day, my secondary school days. So while waiting for admission to the higher institution, so I decided to try something, I mean, I had never done before. So I decided to just start drawing and drawing. Uh, so that's how I started drawing with pen and pencil. But um, I, I, for, for medical illustrations, I started last year, July, and that was because I realized there was um, little or no representation of black people in medical literature and that was what my interest in making those drawings. So can you tell us a bit about this black medical, I mean, drawings or illustrations? Uh, what inspired you to create this form of artistic illustrations? All right, so uh, thank you for that. Now, there have been um, a whole lot of cases where the physician, where doctors misdiagnose a patient because he or she is not familiar with a particular skin condition on a black patient. And, and that's because during his or her training in medical school, he or she wasn't exposed to black drawings. He or she wasn't exposed to how this condition would have represented on a black, on a black skin. I mean, there are, there are a whole lot of cases where medical students in training, um, where the, the teacher or the lecturer would say um, uh, in quotes, um, this condition would represent like uh, would um, would represent this way on the black skin, but the question is how do they represent? You just tell them that it represents, but you do not show the picture of how it represents. So this was a problem in medical school, and medical students had uh, I mean just took that as a norm because nobody uh, thought it wise to question the fact or uh, to ask, can we see how this represents? And this has resulted in a lot of conditions, a lot of situations where patients. Um, were misdiagnosed and, they came, and their situation got very worse. And um, so that was for my interest to, um, to give a voice also to the black people because I mean, the black people also want to be heard and seen and, um, and also um, that, that healthy outcome would also be better. And so that was for my interest and what inspired me to represent black people through my drawings. Now, there's a certain representation in your painting while observing your painting. You paint with a very lush, uh, darker shade, and they're so beautifully black. Uh, is it intentional, the way you draw blackness? Yes, it's, it's very intentional because um, now, as I am um, from, from research, from research, there are only about 4.2% uh, of black drawings in medical textbooks worldwide. And um, it's amazing to know that, that, the, that those that have drawn black drawings, they are not actually black, but they are light brown skin tone. And of course, a white person having a light brown skin tone, which does not represent Africa. So I, I did it on paper that because Africa is black, so for, to properly represent that, that African, the skin tone has to be very dark to represent that that's an African person. Because there are, a lot of, there, there, um, there are some brown skin illustrations which may not represent Africa. But black drawings would definitely represent Africa. So my drawings are intentionally 
done black to represent Africa people. Fantastic. Your art tends to promote uh, the importance of representation in science. And uh, you believed uh, that uh, showing darker skin tones not only helps people relate to artworks, but promotes uh, equality within the medical world. And I want to start, I mean, ask you uh, this question. Uh, do you consider yourself a political artist? <laughs> um, well, not really. I, I, I would consider myself as an advocate because I have, a, I have a mission and I have a purpose and I use my art to speak up for what I believe in. So I wouldn't say I'm a political uh, artist, but I would say I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate to my art. Uh, but, but some will say that your imagery is unapologetically black and there is a strong political statement that stands behind it. How do you reflect and articulate the black identity in your paintings as well as the challenges it faces in the social fabric of the contemporary say, uh, art? Well, it's amazing to know that, that the whites are not apologizing for drawing their white skin. Then as a black person, I shouldn't apologize for drawing a black person. Because, I mean, I'm trying to represent my skin. So as the whites, because, I mean, all what the white gave, gave to us was their skin color. And somebody had to change that. And so I'm not, um, I'm not uh, being, uh, what I say, uh, 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 what I say, uh, apologizing for drawing a black person because that's who I am and that's um, what I want to represent. So people who say um, why it has to be black. So I, I think the question should be, why shouldn't it be black? Because I'm a black person, then I have to draw, do what is black, of course, yeah. Great, great. Now, um, when you post a picture, posted this picture of a black fetus uh, in a uh, utero on November 24th, uh, were you hoping to spark a conversation about representation in medicine and disparities in health outcomes for black people? Actually, I wasn't expecting that conversation because I had drawn a whole lot of complex drawings, a whole lot of more beautiful drawings. And I had, I had, I've been doing this for like one year now and have been speaking up for, for the same thing. So I, I wasn't expecting it to go very viral and I get to, to us, um, spark um, conversation around, around the whole world. But it's amazing that it, it, it went through such way and, um, and it's it's something to feel good about. Um, let me also ask you, what is the most fulfilling or satisfying part of creating black medical drawings for you? And the most fulfilling part right now is that our medical textbook would begin to include that. Because when I started drawing these drawings, my hopes was that in the nearest future, that our medical textbook would be more inclusive that, I mean, medical students here in Nigeria and Africa would see themselves in the drawing. So the most fulfilling part of that, of my, of my hope, was that in, in the nearest future, that our medical textbook will be very much inclusive of Black people. Fantastic. Uh, let me ask you, who are your influences and whose work do you appreciate the most today? Yes, um, so while learning, I, 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 had, um, I had a role model, Peter Lawrence, He's a white medical assistant. So the reason why I, I admire him was because his drawings are very detailed and, and because he used most sophisticated tools to do that. So he was he had my role model for a long time. And, uh, but as I earlier said, I'm a self illustrator. So everything I learned was what I taught myself. Great. Uh, uh, let me also find out, uh, what are your wider ambitions for your work? Do you imagine it becoming part of the big history of painting or fitting into a more specific uh, pictorial vein? All right, so um, I, in as much as I want my work to, to stand out, out there, my earnest goal is that they'll be included in medical textbook because that's the drive, that's the purpose. That's the reason why I create these drawings. That because if there are in medical textbook, health outcome would be better. So I, I'm not, I'm not um, making them for them to be on the Hall of Fame, to be one of the beautiful, beautiful drawings on the art gallery shows and all of that. No, but that textbook should include them. And I'm so glad that already publishers out there are already looking towards making these drawings in textbooks. So I, I feel I'm already fulfilling that area and uh, it's something to, to feel good about. Now, if you could give young black, black uh, young artists one piece of advice that you wish you had, what would it be? Uh, so one piece of advice I would say, um, be real, 
we will be authentic because I, I realized a whole lot of um, African people who try to mimic the West and at some point we do not stay true to ourselves and to our color. As, as important as that, we need to remain true to who we are. And um, also, and I would say that um, for young people out there who are um, seeking to make a change, or artists out there who are seeking to make a change, first of all, you must um, uh, seek for mentorship, okay? Because I would say that I'm a product of good mentorship because I realize as Africans, we love working solo. We love trying to push ourselves. We love trying to give glory to ourselves. And in as much as that's okay, but nobody has a monopoly of knowledge. Nobody has a monopoly of experience. So it's important as young persons, learn to work under people, learn to uh, uh, gain knowledge from people. And with that, um, we can make exploits as Africans. Beautiful. Uh, it would be a remiss if I didn't ask you about this. You started a GoFundMe to pay for your tuition during medical school and you have far surpassed your goal. How does that make you feel? I feel so amazing, like so, so overwhelmed because I mean, now this GoFundMe, I have started it since August, okay? And it was very slow. I mean, for like months, I had just about uh, 500 pounds for like, and I was depressed. So ha having to raise twice of what I needed for medical school in the space of one week, I mean, shocked me and I was so emotional about that. I mean, I, I just, I was amazed. I was, I was amazed. Yeah. That's quite interesting. So finally, what are your future plans and projects? Yeah, my future plan and project is, um, so I, I'm working from, by next year to produce a test book, okay, that would show um, uh, defect or disease in children and they're all going to be drawn in black skin. So I, I, my project is start first with children, then I'll go to the women, and then I'll go to the men, then um, on and on. And um, then I also want to start an initiative to train high skill in medical illustrations, because I know that most Africans are not aware of such skills. But I mean, if, so, if that's a skill that they could leverage on and to make a career out of it. So I, I want to start an initiative that will train Africans and, and not only train them, but empower them also with we require gadgets and tools to make a living out of it. So that's my big dream and big goals in the next future. Chidi Aberi, Ibe, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate your insight and perspective. Thank you for having me.